Hello everybody, Presented here, back in my program, and today we're going to be doing the infinite spells for the sharpshooter. These shouldn't be too bad, um, the only one that might give us a little bit of issues is the sharp arrows, and this one's effectively kind of the same as uh, the assassin one, where, yeah, each level up on pierce converts 1% of your attack damage to piercing damage, but this one's a little bit different, where you get an increased chance to convert all your attack damage to piercing damage. So they, they are a little bit, just a tiny bit different, tiny bit more nuanced. Um, but uh, I think each one has its own uh, place in the game. Like you can use each one uh, just a slight, slightly, in slightly different circumstances. But anyways, we're gonna be doing these three. First one's gonna be sharp eye, where each point increases your accuracy by 1%. That shouldn't be hard to make at all. Blinding strike, I've done this many times before, where there's infinites that increase your chance to apply a status effect. Not bad at all. And then sharp arrows, again, might be the one that give us gives us the most uh, trouble. But yeah, anyways, let's go ahead and start it. We're gonna go ahead and do the first one, which is sharp eye. And this extends, not extends, extends. You gotta, you gotta emphasize the the k s. The KS. Uh, no, no spaces. There we go. Okay. So I don't need anything in the super. Pretty sure. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a private var accuracy. It's gonna be a uint equal to one. An override update description. This dot description equals this dot accuracy plus bonus accuracy plus one percent. Oops, put in a percentage there. Plus one percent per level. Easy peasy. So we're gonna override. No, two R's. Yeah, dingus. I'm gonna override unlock where a uh, new stat change event, changing stat accuracy, change type buff, target entity, the owner, source is the owner by a change of one, rounds is gonna be false. And that's pretty good. So then we're gonna override upgrade where we're going to increase this dot accuracy by one, and then basically a new stat change event. And that's it. Told you that infinite spell wouldn't take too long. So, we're now going to initialize it. Sharpshooter, sharp eye, sherp eye, that's the Ermagerd, sherp-er, dank meme right there. It's an old one, but it's, uh, it's still relevant every now and then. Sharp eye, there we go. Okay, so now we're going to infinite spell, sharp eye, unlock, entity player. Then, oh, and then we're going to upgrade it. Don't need anything there. So then I'm just gonna do it about a few times. So we got one, two, I'm gonna do it like up to 10, I guess will be all right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, no, one less, there we go. And let's see, see how it works. What have I done? Oh, idiot, don't put parentheses when you're initializing, dummy. Can't believe I didn't notice that. Okay, let's bring this over here. So yep, working just fine. There's a lot of buffs. Seven, eight, nine. Oh, it's because I'm a dummy and it's before and after. Okay, so yeah, 85. So it worked 10 times. Let's go ahead and just trace the description real quick just to see if the description's working properly. Description. All right, let's see how it looks. 10% bonus accuracy. Working just fine, okay. That did not take long at all, so let's go ahead and do this. Go here. Get rid of sharp eye, because it's working. And the next one is blinding strike, which gives a 
chance to blind the target. Going to extend infinite spell. Okay. Call the super. Nope, what have you done? All right. And then we're going to have a var, private var, blind chance, not change, equals one. Override the description. Basically, the things I've done in the past a million times before. Percent chance to blind by 25% on attack for two turns, plus 1% chance per level. Crap, I always forget, do I, I, no, no, I don't think I capitalize chance. It's weird how I have a capitalization, it's like, if it's a status effect, or if I'm referring to an entity or a stat, I capitalize it, but then for here, if it says like, a certain percent chance to do something, and it's the beginning of the sentence, I'll capitalize chance just because that's like the, the first word you see. But then here, since I've already established a sentence, I don't capitalize this chance here. I don't know, I think it makes it look a little nicer. And so that's why I do it that way. So we're gonna override unlock. And I do need a actual, I actually do need a um, status effect. effect. It's gonna be a Effect listener. I'm going to override. No, no, don't override. Private function apply listener. So then basically, we're going to remove everything that I've done before. I have done this a million times before, and this is no different. This dot blind. Not. I keep doing that. Effect equals new. Effect listener. I forgot to sign out of Steam, so I'm sorry if you see some people sign in and sign off and stuff. Stat listener, we're listening for current health. Attack. Import status effect. And do accuracy debuff. The apply target is going to be the target of the attack by a multiplier of zero just because it's going to be a flat change. Duration is two turns. On source is true. Chance is this dot blind chance. Chance limit is false, round is false, and change is minus 25. All right, and this dot owner stats listeners dot push this dot blind effect. All right, so when we, when we unlock it, we're basically this dot apply listener. Override upgrade. For this one, this dot blind chance plus equals one, this dot apply listener. Boom. Easy peasy on that one. Public static var, sharp shooter, blinding strike. Just initializing it, initializing it just like all my other ones. Ugh, blinding strike. Let's do this. There we go. Okay. Now, infinite dot blinding strike, not unlock, entity player. And we're gonna upgrade a few times. I'm gonna put it up to 10%, so two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay, so that should be fine. Now the player gets a 10% chance to blind. And let's find out if it works. It most likely works. Um, blind. Let's see. Okay, yeah, we actually do get it right here. Change type. Accuracy spell by 25%. So he's blinded. Player blinded the ally. Ally misses their attack. They're able to get the other two attacks. No, I'm sorry. Just one attack before um, the blind reverts right here. And that might be the only time he blinds him. Yeah, he only blinds him once, but it's not super great of a chance. It's 10%, so I wouldn't have expected it to do more than once, or maybe even no times, but that's working just fine. So now we go to the next one, which might take a little bit of work. 
This one is a plus one percent chance to convert attack damage to piercing damage. I think in this case I am gonna have to do what I did before, in that I'll use um, change listeners, but I'm gonna need two of them, and I'm gonna need to link them together. And I will explain more of that when I get into it. So let's make the last one. We're burning through these really quick. I think it's a good change of pace to make a lot of, uh, or a few very long videos, a couple middling videos, and a few uh, very short ones. And hopefully this one's not going to be too long, just because I know you guys are busy people. You, We all have things to do. I'm just hoping you stick around for... You know, as much as as much as you're willing and able to, and hopefully this video is a lot more digestible with how short it's going to be. So we're going to do a I don't know public. No, it's not public. It's private because we don't need to worry about any other um, outside class using this uh, variable. Uh, convert chance uint equals one. I'm going to override update description. All right, all right. This dot description equals this dot convert chance plus no no no. Don't do that. Percent chance to convert attack damage dealt dealt to piercing damage. Oh yeah, actually, plus one percent chance per level. Cool, easy. So then I'm going to need two var, because one listener, since my listeners can only deal with one thing at a time, I'm going to need to have two listeners. The first listener is going to deal, or basically it's going to listen for attack damage that you deal, and it's going to um, take the amount of attack damage that you're going to do, and and deal piercing damage equal to that amount and I'm gonna have another listener that's listening for attack damage and it's going to uh, make that attack damage deal no damage so it effectively converts the damage to piercing and I'm gonna have to link them together so that when the piercing one goes off the attack damage uh, reduction will go off at the same time and if since I link them together neither of them are going to activate independently. They're going to have to activate together. So that's what linking does. I'm gonna have to link them together and I'll show you that. I've done it before, but um, I don't do it very often. So I would not be surprised if this is the first time you're gonna see me link them together. It's not hard. I just set a few Booleans and then from there, it uh, the rest of the code does it for me. So let's do this. So we're going to do the convert listener and it's a change listener and attack. Um, basically negation attack negate is another change listener nope don't need multiple of those I'm gonna have a function apply listeners it's just listeners doesn't really matter all right and then from here I'm going to basically go to change listener do the same thing I've done a million times before again convert listener from the owner of this spell, do the same thing with this attack negate. And this dot convert listener equals new change listener. Okay, so with stat listener is a current health attack. Change type, we're changing it to piercing damage. Applied target is gonna be the target of the attack. Stat to change is current health because we're dealing um, piercing damage. Base stat is the value of the attack that's going through by a multiplier of 1, because it's going to be dealing the same damage, is positive. Uh, technically it is, because the owner of the listener is the one that the is positive is looking for. So is this listener on the player a positive listener, which it is? On source is going to be true, because it's when the player deals the attack and not any other scenario when anyone else deals attack damage is pretty is true because it has to do the change before the attack damage goes through chance is going to be this dot convert chance chance linked is this one's false because it's it's the first listener I'm gonna change I'm gonna make the chance link true on the attack negate listener so this one's gonna be false 
rounds. Okay, actually, I don't need any of this other nonsense then. Yep, okay, so that's fine. Then this dot attack negate equals new change listener. We're listening for a current health attack. Change that doesn't matter because we're changing the value of the attack. Applied target is going to be the target. Stat to change is the value of the attack by a factor of the value attack multiplied by negative one because it's basically no matter what damage it's going to do, it's going to be negated. So we're so we're multiplying it by negative one and we're adding that to it. So if you deal ten, if you deal um, ten damage, which in actuality you're adding minus ten to the health of whoever you're targeting. And so when you multiply by negative one, it makes negative 10, 10, and it adds 10 to the damage value, which is negative 10. And of course, negative 10 plus 10 equals zero, so it deals no damage. Is positive, technically it's not positive because it's reducing the damage that you're dealing, but um, you know, just making it politically correct. On source is true, is pre is true. Chance, ch in this case, chance can be 100 because since it's only going to apply whenever this convert listener applies, it doesn't matter what I set this chance to. I can set it to zero and it'll still apply because anything that's linked to effects before it, if the, f if the first effect applies, then the next ones are guaranteed to apply no matter what their chance is. And then chance linked is true, so now since I'm Basically, when you set the chance link to true, it links this effect to the effect that's in, to the previous effect that's in the listener array. And since, and since I'm adding these two at the same time, they're going to be beside each other. This one's going to be added first, this one's going to be added second. So this one's going to be linked to this one. Hopefully that makes some sense. Rounds is true, so everything I don't need to, I don't need to worry about, so this is fine. And then this.owner stats listeners dot push this dot convert listener this dot attack negate all right we're gonna unlock this dot apply listener and then I'm gonna override override all right, then this dot convert chance plus equals one. This dot apply listener, and that should be good. Let's uh, test it out after I initialize it. Sharp shooter, sharp arrows. We got sharp eyes and sharp arrows. Everything is very very refined. Sharp arrows equals new sharp arrows. All right. Do the same thing here. Basically, sharp arrows. No, nope. there you go. <laughs> okay, so now there should be a 10% chance to convert. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay, I see what I did. Maybe. Don't hit shift whenever you're typing. How about that? Awesome, okay. Let's try it out, see what happens. Did any of them pop? Yep, okay, so we got it here, actually. It, it says he dealt zero damage because it's going off of the attack damage, but here you can see he dealt piercing damage and the attack damage was negated. So, works just fine. Maybe we get it off again, perhaps? Oh yeah, I've got one right here, one right there, and that's about it. We got two of them. So yeah, that one's working just fine, and holy crap, this was a very short video. So all of my infinite spells are working just fine. Wow. Good thing about um, passives and infinite spells, with the exception of eye gouge, because that took me about 40 minutes to fix because this upgrade gave me some trouble, but I got it working. Good news. The good thing about um, passives and infinite spells are they're restricted by these listeners here, and as long as these listeners are wor in working order, then these are easy to make because they're restricted, like I said, 
the thing about active spells is they're not restricted because in the cast spell function that gives me a lot more versatility in the what the spells can do so the active spells are the ones that are going to take the longest time to do passive spells again very well they're easier and then infinite spells are almost always going to be extremely easy just because they're really simple just because the way that they're supposed to work they're supposed to be like you're supposed to put a lot of attribute points in them after you upgrade everything else and you have no other way to spend your points put them in infinite spells because those are going to be your sinkhole on attribute points for the rest of the game all right so now that the sharpshooter is completely finished um we have one more class before all the player classes are f completed and then from there i'm going to start with the um, ally classes and i will have to figure out what i'm going to do with everything down here because i haven't finished the classes yet as, as you can see shaman's kind of almost done i do need to think of some passives for him ninjas i have one passive and infinites are done Duelist, a little bit there. Hunter, barely anything. And Brewer, absolutely nothing. So I'm not... Uh, I'm pretty far away from being from being done. But right now, what I have completed is pretty good. And I'll show you what we're going to be doing next. We're going to be doing Herbal Remedy and Experimental Potion on the Herbalist. Herbal Remedy heals an ally by 25% of their maximum health over 5 turns. So that heals them by 5% of their max health per turn. And then the upgrade plus 15% maximum health heal, that's in total. So it actually increases the heal per turn by 3% for a total of 7% per turn. No, I'm sorry, 8% because 5 plus 3 is 8, you friggin' dingo. And then an upgrade additionally removes any bleeds, cripples, blinds, or poisons currently afflicting the ally. So... This is kind of like a, a small cleanse. It's going to get rid of any, like, um, you know, like, uh, I don't know how to, to describe. It's like if you played uh, Monster's Den, uh, what's the newest one? Not the one he's making, which is, I think, Godfall, but Monster's Den. Ah, I forget what it's called. It's the third one. It's, it's the really good one. He has, like, two different kinds of status effects. It's, like, physical effects and... Um, some other kind of effect like the physical one is red and it's things that affect you physically like a cripple or a bleed and then the other one is like poisons and stuff like that and the herbal the herbalist upgrade for this one is kind of like it's only affecting the physical the physical part where it's like if you're poisoned if you're crippled if you're bleeding if you're blinded but it's not doing anything else like anything magical like if you're taking magic damage from any other status effect it's not gonna apply to it Anyways, that was a weird way to describe this upgrade. It's just a, a worse um, Templar cleanse, basically. And then Experimental Potion is basically like a large buff, or bit like a small buff to a large amount of stats. So he gains plus 10% damage, plus 10% damage reduction, plus 10% accuracy, plus 10% crit strike chance, and plus 10% quickness for three turns. And then the upgrade gives plus 15% potency. This one's going to be a motherfucking nightmare just because I'm going to have to have so many status effects. And this upgrade additionally provides even more. It provides instant kill chance and debuff resistance equal to the current percent. So if you have 10%, um, it's going to give you 10% debuff resistance. If you have the upgrade, you're going to get 25% debuff resistance. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'll have fun with this one because that's going to be like 8, 2, 3, 4, 5. No, that's 7 status effects that I'm going to have to have on that one class. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And anyways, that's a small look into what we're doing. In the next video, I hope you guys enjoyed the sharpshooter. And with each class that I go through, that's one step closer to being completed and on to the next portion of the game, which is hopefully going to be combat, which I'm going to love to do. <laughs> Which uh, is, you know, 50% facetious because combat's going to be extremely difficult, but also extremely rewarding. And I hope you guys are there to see me pull my hair out on making combat work. And for now, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, then please show your appreciation by doing all the garbage that I enjoy you doing, like clicking the like button, subscribing, commenting, all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys next time.